So here we are at the third video. Uh, just to do a quick recap, we have our simple site with a parent list issues and a child list time. And whenever you click on the display of an issue, you also see a list of all the child ent time entries for that issue. However, creating those child relationships is a manual process. Uh, you saw that before in the previous video. You actually have to know the idea of the parent when entering it. It's not usable at all and pretty worthless as far as I'm concerned. So what we need to do is automate that process so that when you create a time entry, it automatically knows who the parent is and sets that ID for you so you don't want to mess with that. And even better, we want to be able to click uh, a link here on this display page and to create that child. So that way we know when we go to an issue, we can directly create a child entry from there. Okay, and the key to that is, remember, when we're on this display page, we know the ID of the parent, ID3, that query string variable. So we want to pass that query string variable even to our new child page, so that when we are entering a new child entry, the ID for the parent is in that query string, and we can use it when creating our child. And that's how we're automatically going to set that entry. And that's what we're going to go through and do here real quickly. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new page to store those new child entries. All right, and to create a page, we're going to create a custom page. If you haven't do, done this, maybe you're going to learn something new here. We're going to go to Site Actions, Create. We are going to create a document library. We will call it Pages, and it is going to be a web part page. So let's create that. Now let's go ahead and create a page there. The page's name is going to be New Time. I don't care what layout you choose. Choose whatever makes you happy. Click on Create. Okay, here's our page. Empty page, places for web parts. Go ahead and just click on Exit Edit Mode, and now let's go back to SharePoint Designer. Remember, this is the page that we're going to be storing our new time entry on. So if you press F5 over here in the Explorer, it'll refresh. There's our pages library, and look, there's our new page, new time. Okay, so if we do click to insert web part, we want to insert a SharePoint control, a custom list form, and again, this wants to be a time new item page. So click OK. It builds our page for us. Here's our new entry page. Click on Save. Yes, we're aware that we're unghosting it. So now when we go back and uh, we refresh this page we created, we get an error. Because I probably should have just gone and let's just click on it. There we go. SharePoint hates refreshes, so don't refresh ever in SharePoint. There's my new best practice. Don't refresh in SharePoint. All right, so here's the new page we just created. Uh, again, it's still a manual process. There's title, title three, I think we're on now, four hours, entry date of today. Again, let's go ahead and set that parent of three. I mean, this is basically the exact same page, except it's a custom page. So now when we click on SharePoint is too awesome, we see our other entry that we just created from our custom page. The custom page works. Now we need to automate getting that ID to that new page and uh, get there for you automatically. To do that, let's go back into SharePoint Designer. We're using SharePoint Designer a lot today. We'll go again to our display form. Okay, so for our display form, we want to we want a link so that we can insert a new item directly from here. So click on the little arrow for the common data view tasks. Click on change layout. Go to editing and go to click on show insert item link. Okay? Click OK. When we do this, it creates this insert link here. Now we don't actually want this insert link. We want to put our own link here. I did this because I know I've got the XSL right. I know I've got all the formatting right. So I know it's not going to throw any weird formatting errors because I didn't do something right. But the main, main reason I did that was just to get the link there. Now I can overwrite the link with what I need. 